Hey there, everyone. I hope you're all doing good. Today, I'm going back on the Topfer basic system tree to talk to you about the more West Coast modules, the wave multiplier and the slope generator mostly. also talk about what is patch programming. This is a term coming from surge. The surge is very interesting, especially in that patch programmable way, which means you can turn some modules into what they are not supposed to be, or you can just program them by patching them into a function that you want them to do, which is something that we are going to do in this video. I'm going to show you how to patch up a sequencer in this system that doesn't have one, for example. Okay, let's first start to listen to the wave multiplier. So the wave multiplier is somewhat the opposite of a filter. Last time we talked about subtractive synthesis, where you use a waveform that have a lot of harmonics and you filter them out. You, you reduce the harmonic content. Here we are going to do the opposite. We are going to use a waveform with no harmonics at all, a sine wave. We could also use a triangle. Send that to the input of the wave multiplier. There was already some sort of distortion happening because of the input level, I guess. Let's put everything at zero. That seems all good. Okay, just with the level knob, we can have some new results. But then we have all those different knobs that will basically add harmonics to this sine wave in different ways. drastic. As you can see here, all those knobs have a different reaction depending on where the others are. So it's quite of a, an organic kind of thing. Let's go for a drone thing. Just put on some reverb. That will send a lot of modulations to all these inputs. create a stepped random voltage by feeding the random output of this noise and random module. The input of the sample and hold. I'm going to need a clock here. The slew processor and generator the slope generator, as I like to call it, as in the search term, comes in ND, as it can be basically anything. Right now, I put it to cycle mode, which will make it loop on itself. 
from this end out, I would get a square wave, which, ca which I'm going to use as a clock. different timbers than last time. Still have this. I'll try to modulate it at audio rate. which is something that I really like to do. Especially on wave multipliers and wave folders, when you modulate them with noise, it makes everything super angry. Let's try the different flavors. Pretty nice, angry, noisy drone. Let's stop here for this part. And now we are going to talk about the voltage controlled slew processor and generator. This module can be almost anything, it's a pure patch programmable thing. It can be a VCO, an LFO. An envelope. A filter. The main use I want to discuss right now as it's one of my favorite technique with the surge modular and as well as with other instruments that are inspired by it such as the make noise, no coast is the frequency division. We can take an oscillator, for example. Very high, like this. And patch it to the trigger input. Let's move all the timing to zero. And now I'm going to listen to the output of this module. It is at the same frequency than our oscillator. with a slightly thinner sound. You can see it as some sort of a wave shaper. The first half of the knob here will actually do some wave shaping. But as you keep turning it up, it starts to generate subharmonics. This works only with the rise time. The fall time here will mostly change the shape of the wave. You can set it like wherever you want.
And then the game is to modulate that rise time. What I really like to do is actually to send some sequencers. If you send an analog sequencer to this, you will get only subdivisions of your main frequency. So it will never be really out of tune. We don't have a sequencer here. So let me show you how to patch program one. So in order to make ourselves a sequencer, we will need a clock. Let's say this LFO here. We're going to mold that clock because we are going to send it to a few different places. First to the clock divider and then to the sequential switch. The other module we are going to use is the inverting mixer over there. This one does have one specific thing. The first channel is actually going to create an offset. So let me plug the oscillator to the output so we can listen to that. So an offset is just um, voltage, uh, held voltage. We're going to patch it to input one of the sequential switch. What the sequential switch does is that it has four input or output to one input or output. It's a bi-directional thing. Here we're going to patch stuff inside this and send everything to control the VCO. Let's take this input so we can attenuate it. Okay, now we have a nice interval. So this offset is patched to this input. So every time the sequencing switch is on this position, we'll send that voltage from its output to the VCO. Now we'll, we'll patch some clock divisions to some of those attenuators over there and patch them to the sequential switch. Put the sequence of the switch on position three. So it cycles only through three, the three first position. Now we have a sort of weird melody. It's not tuned in any way. I've tried, but it's not that good. This is where the sub harmonic generation comes handy. We patch this to the trig input of the voltage controlled slew processor generator. Let's take the output straight away into a filter. can tame the harshness of it. And instead of controlling the VCO with the weirdo sequencer, we are going to control this guy. Up to that. You can send an LFO to the fall. To very slightly change the wave shapes, which gives you something that sounds a little bit like pulse width modulation. You could take the end output, which is a square. Something a bit more aggressive. From there, you can control 
your oscillator with your keyboard. So you can transpose it however you like. Voices you can create out of only one oscillator. Basically, you can do some polyphonic things like this, which are quite fun. Thank <laughs> you. 